So what's your name and where are you from, man? My name is Chris and I'm, I'm from Chicago. Okay, and you've done time in Mississippi, Chicago, and most importantly, most of your time, which was a little under 12 years, you said, in Florida. Yes. And you have been to this JIT camp that is very popular on the channel right now. That we've been I was actually at two of them. I, I started off at Brevard Correctional Institution, which is in Sharps, Florida, which is considered Central Florida. And from there, I did I did a year and a half there. And then I did six months at Lancaster Correctional Institution. I only did six months at Lancaster because my I was able they sent me from there to the panhandle to regular adult prison. No more youthful offender. Okay, so how long did you do all together in the JIT camps? Two years. Two years. Right at two years. Okay, and um, well, let me ask this. What what did you go to prison for? You already told me your state ID and stuff like that, uh, but tell the viewers what you went to prison for. I ended up going to prison for several counts of burgl burglary of an occupied dwelling. Um, burglary? Yeah, burglary. It was hard for you to uh, say that word for some reason. Uh, uh, it was kind of hard for you to say that word for some reason. Well, I was trying to get it all out. Burglary, <laughs> the way they got it written up is burglary of an occupied dwelling. Okay. Nobody was home at the time, but people lived there. So that's how Florida charges you. Okay, okay. So you went um, to prison for burglary. What'd you, and what, I were you, also, what were you supporting? Wait, some kind of drug habit or something? Yeah, I mean, I was into cocaine, but you know, snorting back then, but it was more, we were, I mean, it was a little crew of us. It was more on a money tip than anything. Okay. We were just, you know, and we were into cars too. I have, uh, they also ended up while I was in the County fighting those burglary cases, they ended up hitting me with two grand theft auto cases and possession of, uh, stolen motor vehicle parts okay and what county did you do time at i was in brevard county jail um i you know for about maybe 11 months when i got sent to prison i went to central florida reception center cfrc from cfrc and i was housed in the yo side from there i was sent to brevard correctional institution okay and let's go ahead and start with the JIT camps, man. Uh, from what I hear from multiple people that it's pretty much a damn gladiator school, man. From the type of stories I've heard coming out of these JIT camps. How was your time there? That's what I'm, that, that you know, I'm, I'm glad you brought it up in the way that you did. Before I went to prison, you know, of course, I, and I think I've heard you speak of this before. Like your first time going to prison. And when you're in the county jail, you're asking everybody, well, what's it going to be like? You know, this and that. And I'll never forget one old man told me, you carry yourself, no matter where you go, you carry yourself like a man and you're going to be treated like a man. This dude had been to prison like six or seven times. He had an F letter. Um, so anyhow, yeah, when I first got to Brevard, I fought a handful of times within the first couple of weeks it was more over what petty stuff uh the first time was because I, they were threatening to extort me so this individual came into my cell with a list you know all all written out what they wanted each week and as he handed me the list i took off on him that's all i knew to do Okay, so these dudes are trying to extort you, and you just said, you know, the only thing you knew what to do was just to fire off on them. Yeah, he came in the cell by himself. He didn't come like three or four deep. He, and it was another white guy, surprisingly enough. He was all tatted up. I, I, I believe he was a uh, insane gangster disciple, he, called, he said he was. Okay. Um, and, and I was expected to pay $30 a week because they didn't know me nobody knew me didn't know what i was or who i was so 
anyway, I fired off on dude. Um, end up doing because, of course, when the fight starts, who won the fight? Rushes. Huh? Did he win or did you win? I'd say it was pretty evenly matched. We got we ended up getting gassed. That, okay. That's how the police broke it up. We were still going when they came in. It started in the cell. It ended up on the tier and eventually went down the stairs into the day room. Like I just would not let up. He he would he would get off on me and then he would try to get away from me and I would continue after him. Oh, you were one you of those know? guys that could take a whooping and just keep on going, huh? Oh, look at look at my I've taken many of them. Many of them, son. Okay. Um so yeah, and then after that, I think it was uh, the other two fights were more of like respect issues, but it was made up pettiness. If if you can follow me on that, like for instance, one occasion was I was at the um, water fountain in the day room, and my elbow brushed another inmate's elbow, and he won the fight because I touched him. So. Again, same same circumstances. I went first. I just, you know, because you know when you're in those type of situations, you know when fighting is inevitable. Yeah. And at Brevard CI, any type of argument, fighting was inevitable. Like everybody around expected it. They 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 rooted it on. They they encouraged it. Even the COs, you know, they would let you fight finish and then haul you off to the to the box to solitary confinement for 30 days uh -huh. you know um but yeah that was once that was over with somebody else approached me from that kid's set or gang whatever you want to call it he apologized and we became okay I mean, we didn't become best of friends or nothing like that, but there was a mutual respect, respect there. Yeah, okay. Yeah. I understand yeah. that. Uh, some dudes I've seen that happen, uh, you know, come over there and correct someone else's wrongs. Like, hey, this was just some petty stuff, man. You know, no harm feeling, you know, no, mm -hmm. no harm, no foul type stuff. I understand right. that. Uh, I, was, I was told that it was basically done – because I was the new kid on the block to see where I was at. When, exactly. Was I soft or was I going to stand up for myself? Now, mind you, at the time, I'm small now. I weigh a buck 60, you know. But at the time, I, I weighed at most 135 pounds. Yeah. You know, 19 years old. So I had to work with everything I had, so to speak, you okay. know. So there was a lot of gangs in there. Did you... Uh see a lot of weapons and stuff used or anything like that in these jig camps? Few and in, few and far in between. You had your occasions where you would hear about somebody in another dorm getting stabbed or cut with a, a razor or beat in the head with a lock while they're sleeping. You know, fortunately... For me, I was housed in a two-man cell for most of my time. So all I had to deal with was my celly, you know, whereas some of them other dorms, they were open bay dorms. They'd have 140 men on one side and 140 on the other. Yeah. You know, and okay. yeah, so it was different in, in those open bay dorms. A lot more stuff tended to kick off versus the two man cells uh -huh. because in the two man cells, we knew all they had to do was lock us in. Like they would lock us in for days. If a fight happened, regardless whether you were involved in it or not to, to, to get control back of the pod, they would lock you down for three, four five days, okay. bring all your meals to the slot, you know, and the COs, man, I'm hearing that the COs were horrible to these little jit jitterbugs, man. Is that true? Yeah, they were. They were. But it was only in the beginning. You know how when you get bussed to a new location, it's like the CEOs always wanted to make examples of the new meat, fresh meat, so to speak. Yeah. I never 
I can say, fortunately, the most I ever had happen to me at the hands of the CEO was a slap in the back of the head. <coughs> you know? Yeah. Um, I've watched other videos on your channel and I've seen, you know, regarding Florida, doing time in Florida. And I'm not disagreeing. I'm just saying that it don't happen as often as some of it's made to sound. You know, um, I was maybe, told maybe in, if it was the in Earth, those dorms, maybe you think. Yeah, that could be a good possibility. But but at the same time, anything that happened in those dorms, once we got out to yard, I mean, it's like, you know, it, we're bad as bad as a bunch of women. You know what I'm saying? If something went down in them dorms 20 minutes later, it was on the yard. What happened? Yeah. So. And you never really heard too much craziness going on like that. Just mainly shit with locks. They like putting locks in the socks, bars of soap in socks. That's yeah. how a lot of them guys handled their issues, okay. you know. And when you got transferred to what well, adult prison, well, I'm trying to think if there's any more questions I can ask about this JIT camp stuff. What's up with the tray thing? Were, were correctional officers really pressured about people swapping food during chow hall? No, no. Only if you had to be, if, as long as you were at the same table, you could swap food. But if you tried to swap food to another table, that's a different story. Then, yeah, they would, they, you would definitely, if they caught you, you would definitely catch hell. You would probably go back to your, your housing unit without eating. Wow. Okay. Uh, so would you say the adult prison, adult side of the penitentiary, uh, was easier than the JIT camps? No, I would actually, for me personally, and this is just being honest, I would say that the adult, when I first got to adult prison, it was rougher than JIT camp. Perfect, just like that. All right. Okay. We got the camera situated. Sorry about that, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I was. I do apologize. Yeah, I was trying to get him to set up the camera so it's not shaking so much. I'm always thinking about the fans out there, the viewers. But anyways, I like I was saying, man, was Jit Camp more dangerous in your eyes than the adult prison? Did you have a rougher time in there than an adult prison? Well, like I said, you know, the roughest time I had in Jit Camp was the first month. After that first month, like it, it it was it was okay. You know, I mean, you still had to watch your surroundings, and I watched who I uh, associated with and who I did not. But now, when you get being, and I'm just keeping it raw. What kind of? What kind of? I hate to break. I hate to stop you again. But what kind of outfits did they wear in JIT camps when you were doing time? Um, you wear the regular, they, they, they got the different jet camps, got different ones, but like Brevard, you wore the, the stripes like uh, yellow and white stripes. But now in adult prison, it's just a blue uniform, a blue pair of pants with a white stripe running up the side. Okay. And then you would pin your ID. You know, there's a thing where you pin your ID. You got to have that ID on at all times whenever you're traveling anywhere on the compound okay i heard that they make you wear some kind of hat or something in jit camps yeah when you're in trouble oh, when you're in trouble what do they give you they'll wear you it's a red cap and they'll make you do things like they got uh these logs like say you and one of your partners get into some crap with a co or a co catches you doing something you're not supposed to be doing They'll make you put these hats on and you got to carry this log between the two of you around the track or around the yard and tell you until they tell you to stop stuff like that okay. or marching, you know, like drill style. It, it all depends on that correctional officer. They make it up as they go, to be honest with you. Okay. I, I really, I really could care less about the outfits. Those are actually trick questions to see 
if you answer them appropriately. That's how I ask people certain questions, man. To see. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. But yeah, you, it's you're you're doing good so far. I must say you're passing old death's tests. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> But, uh, yeah, okay, man, let's get step back into the adult side. We're leaving the JIT camp with all the jitterbugs. We're leaving them behind, and you said it's a little rougher for you in the adult side, man. What's What made it so – what 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 was it, the environment like for it to be different? I'll, I'll tell you, and this is just keeping it real. Um, if you're a, if you're a first-time young white boy entering the system in Florida in adult camps – you are going to be approached by what they call booty bandits. Oh, you yeah. Know? Yes. <laughs> and, and what prison was this in? Um, I was at Golf Correctional Institution in the Panhandle right outside of Panama City. Okay. And what level? Was that a higher level prison or yeah, that was a that was a level level four and up. So four and five okay. why i got sent there with the charges that i had i'll never know but that's just the way they classified me at cfrc okay it took me a long time it took me into my second bid to finally work my custody down to medium minimum medium well it's probably because you had a lot of time man you know yeah yeah, that has to do with it, too, because, you know, when you're minimum, you can get gate passes, go out and mow grass and stuff like that. Yeah. But back to the. Yeah. So when I got there, I didn't know nobody being that I'm from a whole other state. So it wasn't it wasn't for me like it was for a bunch of guys where they'd get on a compound and they'd have at least three or four guys that they knew from their neighborhood or went to school with, or, you know what I'm saying? I didn't know anybody. There was guys there that claimed to be from Chicago, but they were usually more slimier than the guys from Florida. Yeah. You know, there was no unity because we were from Chicago. Okay. You know, if they were from, if they caught their charges in Miami they rode with people from Miami. Okay, okay. You know? And uh, you, you were 19 years old when you left the JIT camp? No, no, no. I was 21 when I left the JIT camp. 21, okay. I was 19 when I went in. Oh, okay. So you left JIT camp 21, went to the adult prison, uh, and you said that someone approached you. Some booty bandits, huh? Yeah. My first uh, <laughs> approach, we'll call it, was actually on the yard and it was an older uh, African American and he um, he came at me in the finesse type way you know uh, he was trying to bamboozle you the nice way huh yeah 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 but <laughs> when he realized that wasn't working because not for nothing but I, I come like I, I had people on the streets I had my brother well, two of my older brothers, uh, the one you've seen in, in, in the Instagram, constantly, like, I never wanted for nothing is what I'm trying to say. Okay. And this particular guy, the way he came at me was, you know, I know you're new here, and he talked real fast, you know. I know you're new here, and if you need anything, you know, honey buns, cigarettes, all you got to do is holler at me. So I says to him, I said, yeah, and what do I have to pay back? Well, nothing. I'm just looking out. You know, maybe you can do me a favor one day. Yeah, okay. Uh -huh. I I only asked him that just so I could nip it in the bud. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because I knew what he was trying to do. You know, um, and I didn't need to borrow shit. Uh, I didn't need to borrow nothing from anybody. Because if I needed it, I'd go to the window and get it. You know, Um this particular guy's name, they called him Scarface. Uh -huh. uh, half of his face was burnt. Come to find out, down the line, he was a three-time lifer for sexual predator. I had him, I had him Googled, you know what I'm saying? And um, the way his face, it's told the way his <coughs> face got burned was from a younger white guy that he raped 
and they worked in the kitchen together and this guy ended up throwing the kid ended up throwing some type of grease or something in his face okay. and he literally melted the right side of his face so not only was he coming at me but he was one ugly sob <laughs> I mean, he was just, he, he was horrendous, you know. But I, man, the way I can already was, picture the title of this video. <laughs> <laughs> so let me tell you, regarding him specifically, let me tell you what happened. So as time goes on, he realizes that I'm not going. You know what I'm saying? So now he calls himself whenever he sees me. He tries to stop me and talk to me and get whatever time out of me. That he can. So he was being but, persistent. Yeah, but I, but 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 by this point, I done linked up with dudes in my unit, made a couple, what I consider to be friends. I'm actually still in touch with one of them to this day. So, um, you know, we had several late night discussions in in my cell of how different ways I could handle the situation. You know. Um, because he didn't seem to be letting up yet. He wasn't threatening. Okay. Fast forward three months. I'm on the yard. I just came from the, um, canteen window. I had a bag full of stuff and I had a cold Coke in my hand unopened. I'm walking to towards the, they, they played a lot of flag football and softball and stuff like that. Well, there was a big flag football game going on, and there was a couple buddies waiting for me to get over there. We we're going to watch the game together, walk the track, smoke a J, you know, yeah. typical stuff. As I'm cutting over there, my guy is looking at me because he sees me coming, and out of nowhere, here comes Scarface. And he comes up behind me, and he taps me on the booty, and he says, where's my Coke at? And I turned around. Death. When I tell you I turned around and gave him that Coke, brother, my right hand to God, I gave him that Coke. Fully unopened. He ate that Coke dead in the face. <laughs> and then I dropped my can I dropped my canteen bag and I put my, my little dukes up, you know? But I had it I had embarrassed him so bad that all he could say to me was you know that wasn't necessary. You, you know that wasn't necessary. But but because as soon as it happened, my buddies started coming my way. Back you up. know, I think I, I think he was gonna take off on me at first until he realized. Wait a minute. Number one, this kid is gonna fight, and number two, he's not alone. You know, and um, needless to say. The next morning, we had like a, it wasn't me, it was a, a, a guy from my dorm, a, a, what we consider an OG. He went out and met uh, Scarface under one of the pavilions and, you know, basically went on my behalf and said, listen, what, you need to leave this kid alone. W what do you want to do about the situation? We can go behind the building and, and he's willing to fight you one on one. Or he can come out here now, shake your hand, you go your way and he'll go his way and be done with it. You know, uh, that was black. That was a good friend of mine uh, out of Jacksonville. And um, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's cool. But, yeah, it was, it was real cool. It, he was my celly. But he'd been he'd already been down 18 years. So he'd seen quite a bit. So he, was he told just, he was, me he was, he was a like, good guy, man. Yeah. And, and he told me, he said, you know, after what you did on that wreck yard yesterday, it's not it's it's just beginning. Like we got to get ahead of this and nip this in the bud before it turns into like actual blood being shed, you know. Either dude stabbing me up or me going at him. Because now at this point, as soon as I got back after the wreck yard incident, I bought me a knife. Plain and simple. I How didn't make one. I went and talked to 
somebody and I bought one. How much they charge you? Five bucks. Damn, that's a steal. Bro, bro it was a it was a nail I, like a like a wasn't even a roofing nail. It was bigger than a. It was a long ass nail that somebody took and grinded the point down and then made like a makeshift handle out of electric tape and cardboard. So the actual it would the actual once you know with the handle and everything the actual shift part was about three and a half four inches to That's where you could cheap. do some damage yeah it was more like a, a it was more like a thick ice pick yeah you know so anyway i'm not here to glorify none of that but yeah i definitely equipped myself but after Black went out and had the conversation with him, 15 minutes later, Black sends somebody inside to get me. I go outside under the pavilion. They're both there. Um, he apologizes to me for uh, tapping me, for touching me. I apologize to him for smashing him in the face with a Coca-Cola product in front of all of his buddies. And I never had a problem out of Scarface again, though. All I'd ever get was a head nod. We'd be in passing, but I was constantly on alert when he was around me yeah. because you don't just do something like that to a man yeah. that, you know, in prison and all you got is your respect and your pride and your word, you know? So I, I was definitely ready until the day that I heard he got shipped off somewhere and I could kind of breathe normal again, you know? All right. Well, look, man, look, I'm really enjoying this. I'm really enjoying this conversation okay. with you. It kind of uh, it really got me got me in the penitentiary trap. But look, I I really have to go run off somewhere really quick, man. Uh, okay. This is what we're gonna do. All right. You said that you have done uh, time in Mississippi and Chicago, correct? Yes. Okay. Look, and I'm sure you got plenty more stories from Florida. Oh, yeah. Okay, well, look, uh, I hate to cut you short, like I said, but I do have a couple things I have to do. Let's see. I think the audience is going to love you. I think they're going to want you back because I can tell you're telling the truth, man, and you sent me your paperwork. But I got uh, you. I got you. Let's go ahead and wrap it up right here. And okay, and try to uh, within the next day or so, we'll we'll get all some more interviews. Cause I want to hear stuff about. I've been looking for someone from Mississippi that's done time in Mississippi. And Chicago. Did you do time in Cook County? I did time in Cook County. Oh, I, I, excellent. excellent. I have not. Yeah, I, I have not done no prison time in Chicago. It's okay. I just want to hear the jail, the Cook County jail, because that's you know yeah. that's a popular jail. Oh, I can jail. tell you all about it from Division One to all the way to Division Fifteen. I can. I've been through them all. Um, and Mississippi, I did two years in the Department of Corrections there for uh, Grand Theft Auto. Excellent. Well, not excellent, but. Excellent. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I can well, definitely share experiences with you. And there's still some things that I want to uh, iterate from Florida. Yeah, we're going to get there. We're definitely going to do it. it. We're definitely okay. going to get there. But see, the reason why I'm so intrigued is because, you know, in prison, a lot of defense mechanisms that inmates have is by size, look, demeanor. And I'm not, I'm, like yeah. I said, I'm not, uh, you know, saying you're not capable of causing some severe damage because you are more, sh more likely you are. But what I'm saying is from judging by a book by its cover, you wouldn't expect, like, I wouldn't expect you to have done as much time as you've done uh, if I were just to have met right. you on the streets, you know, uh, right. unless I started talking to you or something along those lines. So that's what's making me really intrigued by your whole by your whole persona and your story. And I yeah, can obviously because tell if you were to run into me on the streets, you wouldn't think for a minute that I'd ever even done time. A lot of people tell me that. Yeah. You know, and I think that's what but makes it really interesting. But anyway, I know you got to go. So I'm going to get what I said I was going to get yeah, go to ahead. you. You're moving and into a new apartment. You said, go ahead, get all that stuff going. And uh, I'll message you a little later, man, and try to do some more recording okay. or future videos, but I definitely want to have you back. And I think my viewers will like to hear more input. On I'm you ready. From, 
I'm ready whenever I'm ready whenever you are, Death. All right, buddy. I appreciate you coming on to the show, and uh, I'll see you soon, man. All right, sounds good. Take care. All right, you too, buddy.